stands out when you use the Seahawks? Oh, man. Really cool balance offensively right now. You know, um, I don't know Gino really well um, from over the years, but he is playing at a high level right now. And he's, uh, um, he's doing a little bit of everything. The play pass, the drop back pass looks good. And he's got the ability with his legs to extend plays and, and, and let his guys get open. And the receiving core is, is one of the best in the NFL. You've got a guy that is um, so unique in DK, just the speed, the size, the strength, the mindset in which he plays. Lockett, a guy that just um, a consistent deep ball threat, finds the soft spots and zones, a tight end that can run. Um, and with all of that, you got a running game that's starting to really go with a, a young rookie who's really starting to figure it out. Um, exceptional speed across the board. It's going to be a tremendous challenge. Jeff, how rare is it for a guy, to, for a guy like Gino, who was very journeyman esque, and all of a sudden just kind of just finds a groove like this, you know, in his first you know, shot? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Like I said, I, I don't know a lot about him just because I hadn't played against him a whole lot since he's been in the NFL. Um, but you would never think that watching the tape. You see a guy that's playing at an extremely high, high clip, a Pro Bowl level for all counts. Um, you know, I've been around it a little bit in the past. I, I played with a guy named Jeff Garcia, who was the same as journeyman, CFL guy, and then all of a sudden became a Pro Bowler for us in San Francisco. So um, I think it's one of those unique positions where sometimes it takes some guys a little bit longer to get in their groove and really find their way. How are the two rookie tackles holding up cross focus? <coughs> Doing a good job. Both are extremely athletic. Um, you could see tremendous upside with both these guys uh, when they really get uh, their feet underneath them and really are playing. It. They, they just they got a, a great potential between the two of them. It's really cool when you look at it offensively. Like if you're part of that Seahawks organization, you got two cornerstones of that offense that are going to be there for a long, long time. Jeff, do you, do you expect do you expect the score as a defense when you go into a season, or is that sort of a bonus? If no, we absolutely expect to score. We expect to get the ball. Um, it's the reason we, we emphasize it so much in meetings and in practice and in walkthroughs and in drill work. Um, every single time we touch the ball out there on the practice field, we score. It's just part of our standard, you know, and, and uh, we've got to make that come more to life in the games. We have to. Jeff, how do you process the numbers this year from last year to this year in the big picture are, I mean, such stark improvements in the rankings and all that kind of thing? Uh, yet the last couple of weeks, you know, you've, you know, you've, you've, there's been one thing that's that's been your downfall, and obviously the microscope's on you a little bit more because there's not as much of a margin for error with the offense struggling a little bit. But how do you how do you balance all that? You know, the 96 yard drive, the you know the 51 yard tight end, you know, sneak out, and with what you've been doing so well, big picture wise. Right. I, you just look at each play and each drive and each game in its own entity and. And you improve where you can improve, you know. Um, you know, I think as a coach and as a player, you just you got to eliminate the the reoccurring potential errors that are occurring, and uh, and just in keep keep improving in all facets. You know, that's the that's the secret of this defense, in my opinion. It's it's not a quick fix because it's based upon principles and it's based upon technique. It's not based upon. Um, a ton of illusion, you know, and, and trying to trick guys. It's it's based upon us outplaying you, you know, and um, so that's why sometimes in year one of this type of system, it can struggle a little bit because it's not just a quick fix mandate. It's 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 something that's built for longevity, for consistency, and um, although last couple of weeks um, were we playing. Good, yeah, we're playing good, but there's there's another place we can go, and there's another place we've been this year. So we just got to keep finding the inches in our game. Uh, Kenneth Walker, uh, the third, just kind of what do you say from him and how he fits in with the Seahawks offense? Yeah, you you don't want to race this guy because he's going to outrun you. He's uh, he's got tremendous speed when he gets on the edge, um, when he does his 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 jump cut and gets on the perimeter, it's a problem, you know. So he's a guy we got to. We got to bottle up. We got to have great edges at all levels, and uh, our pursuit's got to got to come. It's um, he's not a he's not a guy that you tackle with one. You know, it's going to be a collective effort to to, to limit this guy. Hey, so I, I know Sauce has obviously played well all season, but I'm curious: was there was there a moment this season where you felt like you could see it click and he started taking it to another level, or 
I don't know, but maybe he's processing things better because he's getting more experience, things like that. Was there a moment like that this season, you think? I, he, he's had all the, the, the traditional rookie moments. He's had the moments of aha where he's getting it a little bit and you see him reacting and anticipating. Um, and there's also the rookie moments where um, he gets caught on stuff, you know, which is absolutely the norm for all rookies. Um, overall, though, just the level in which he played and the consistency that he's played with as a rookie has been, um, I don't know if I've ever seen it before, you know. So, And to think that he hasn't even scratched the surface of where he can go is, is, is really cool for his future. Do you think uh, the fact that DJ has played against these guys a bunch, you know, last two years, any advantage for him against Tyler and, and, and DK? Maybe a little bit, yeah. I think whenever you got enough experience with guys, you you learn them and you learn their releases and you learn their tendencies and you learn the routes they like and that the the routes that are their strengths and and um, so I I think there's definitely something to that. And he's obviously been a uh, you know he's been sharing all his inside information that he has for these guys. So it definitely can't hurt, you know. But you look at it from a you know a duality of football like. They know him too, so there's going to be strengths and weaknesses to both sides of that. Jeff, I know you're locked in, obviously, to Seattle, but is, it, is, it, uh, is there any part of you uh, when you, with where you come come with this defense? Defense obviously travels in the playoffs and is a big deal. You know, the kind of damage if you guys can just get these two games and get to the playoffs. Um, you know, how dangerous you guys could potentially be. You know, with with the defense you have. Yeah. This defense absolutely has expectation to dominate every time we're on the field, regardless, regardless of circumstance. Um, we played this game to go to the playoffs, to win it all, to win a Super Bowl, absolutely. But I think sometimes when you, you look at the game in that way and you start looking ahead, we all know that can be trouble. You know, So the guys are, um, I absolutely believe they're hyper-focused on this game. It's all that matters. You know, And, um, and, and they do believe that. Uh, that defenses win championships and are absolutely necessary to to win, especially in December, January, and February. How long have talked about this the other day, but the expectations for you guys as a defense have has changed as the year has gone on to where you were saying, like, you know, pretty good the last few games. And, and if you compare it to last year, it's obviously a, a big improvement. But to get to where you want to be, uh, you have to be at another level. So how does that kind of mindset how have you seen that evolve through the defense, and how does that help get you to where you want to go? Kind of, uh, you know, to, to up that standard mentally. Yeah, it's it, it's almost as if um, I don't want to say this the wrong way. There's when you've struggled for a while, there's a hope to do well, you know, and and um, and then you start to to have some success. You start to validate the success with consistency, and then you start to expect to have success. And um, I absolutely believe that's where we're at right now um, for. You know, for the the good things that we did do the last couple games, um, there's absolutely zero men in that entire defensive room that are they're happy with our effort and and would say that's our standard. Um, they believe there's an absolute another place that we can go as far as that's concerned. So, um, very fortunate that we just have such a level of humility in that room where. Um, they, they recognize the fact that we have improved, but we are not the defense that we can be yet. How has uh, Michael Carter played in year two? Uh, he's, he, he's the guy that absolutely does not get enough credit, in my opinion. Um, he plays this nickel position nowadays that is such a hybrid position. On first and second down, for all intents and purposes, he's a linebacker. He's fitting in B gaps. He's, he's playing big boy ball. He's a huge part of our run defense. Um, and then on third down, um, the zone is the zone, which we all are responsible for, but we ask him to play um, man on some of the hardest matches in football. When you, when you play a guy within a slot, it's just there's just so much more space. I have to defend east, west, north, south, all of it, as opposed to sometimes on the edge. Not to say that it's, it's um, easy on the, on the outside, but there's less routes that you have to defend. He has to defend everything, and we put him on an island a lot. So... Um, he does an exceptional job for us. Um, I, he's another guy that just the sky's the limit for him. He's such a he's such a problem solver. Um, we put so many things on his plate. You know, I really think of when I think of MC, I think of CJ. Both guys that run our defense, problem solvers, the guys that uh, um, you know do so many things that that people don't recognize. So I think <coughs> he's done an exceptional job for us. With that defensive system. 
it's well documented. You come from the Carroll tree, and so does Robert. It seems like Pete moved away from that system. He brought in Sean Desai, and he wanted to tweak things. What are your thoughts on this system and where it's at and, and the tweaks that have gone on and what Pete has done this year? Yeah, I think every defense in this league, if, if you don't evolve and grow and continue to adapt to, to offenses, um, you're going to struggle, you know. And I, we were just joking about it the other day, though, like this is the first time that I can remember, um, you know, for playing Seattle over the years, like it was always that staple of cover three, and that's what you were going to get, and that's what they're going to live in. And um, they don't even run it anymore, you know? So it's just, it's very, very different, very unique. It's been a long time since it's been that way. Um, I don't think anybody is really the Seattle of old anymore from a schematic standpoint. Um, although we might have some components that are still the same, uh, there's a lot of what we do that, that wasn't part of those defenses. And, and, and obviously Seattle is evolving as well.